Ah, a obscure yet oddly humorous inanimate object. Instant classic. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Juno. Now, some of you might be wondering why I'm reviewing a movie that is 13 years old. 13 years old, let that sit in, dear God. But my wife found this at the library the other day, and funnily enough, I've never seen the film in its entirety. I've only ever seen like the last 20 minutes, and she hadn't either. He sat down and finally watched it, and considering we were, could remember everyone talking about this movie, everyone praising it when it came out, and all the hype and award acclaim that it received, and it's okay. That's pretty much it. It's all right. The dialogue, while at the time was probably viewed as incredibly witty, very snappy, very funny, which it is, however, has aged quite poorly. The film follows Juno, who, played by Elliot Page, becomes pregnant after having kind of a one night stand with Michael Sarah, who can't believe that this guy was so relevant at one point. It's weird to see him so young yet he looks the same. And she goes through the process of deciding whether to keep it, then does, and finds a family, a couple, that want to have a child, or so it seems, and all the funny little antics, yet surprisingly serious moments that happen throughout the film. I'm very kind of mixed on this film. Like I said, so many people talked about it, so many people praised it, and I can see that in its writing, I can see that in the dialogue. Diablo Cody definitely gives off something that is a very spunky kind of performance from everyone. The dialogue is very snappy, if completely untrue. No one speaks like this at all in the real world. But it's a fun escape from reality, it's a fun escapism, and it's also directed by Jason Reitman, who is a fantastic director. I'm eventually going to have to talk about one of his movies, which is one of my all-time favorite movies. I enjoy its look at the life of a teenage girl going through pregnancy at such a young age. There were certain television shows and whatnot that tried to address this, but back in 2008 it was still kind of frowned upon to have this sort of issue. And then obviously it does have some debilitating issues to women who go through this. It kind of does put their life on hold, if not indefinitely, depending on how severe or how the case of the pregnancy is. But I did like how it talked about it from not just a super serious side. There are some serious moments in it that are very well portrayed by the actors. Allison Janney, who would go on to be the terrible mom from I, Tonya, is actually really damn good in this movie as Juno's stepmom. I thought that she, her performance is fantastic. While the Jennifer Gardner and Jason Bateman bit is a little awkward, especially towards the end of Jason Bateman's character arc, it actually is a change, a deviation, and it's not what I expected. I was not expecting that as in terms of a character from Jason Bateman, but I see the start of him thinking about doing serious roles because I've never found the guy funny, but he absolutely kills it when it comes to serious work. If you haven't seen The Outsider or Ozark, you should definitely check it out. He's just really good at it. There's a lot of starting out actors in this movie too. You got Rain Wilson in it, you got Liv Thurmby, J.K. Simmons before he would go on to become a, a second round of his career. Like J.K. Simmons had been around for so long before this movie that eventually Whiplash would put him up on the precipice. But it was cool to see him back in this. Elliot Page, Ellen Page at the time, does a really fun performance in this film. Again, not a very believable character in terms of any sort of realism, but a good escapism character. And that's kind of the fine line I have with this film between reality and escapism. If we're talking about such a serious subject, the dialogue that they say is just so unbelievable that it pulls me out, even if it does give me a couple of chuckles here and there. And then again, sort of these situations of escapism, the opening credits, like the cartoon element, I loved it. I thought it was very good and it worked really well with the soundtrack, which admittedly the soundtrack in this film is also very good. But it's odd to see that so many people talked about this movie at the time and yet you don't see anyone talking about it now. It's kind of like Avatar, almost, in terms of such huge hype to then kind of disappear into obscurity. I think that Juno still has elements in it that are reminiscent of today. Maybe it hasn't aged as well as it could have, but it's still a worthy film in its own right, if not just as good as everyone thought it would be. Either way, it's a fun little tidbit to go back in time, back to 2006, I assume, when they filmed this movie. It was also filmed out here, so it's cool to see elements of Vancouver and the Fraser Valley back in 2006. One of the reasons why I watch Supernatural so much is for that exact reason. But in the end, I'm gonna give Juno a four out of seven. 
not the be all end all that it was proposed as, but it's still an okay, decent movie. I just don't think it's as great as everyone thought it was. I can understand why it had so much hype when it came out because of the films that were just coming out back then. It was a different kind of time. In the end, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.